All right, hey guys, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Uh, this is going to be covering the dynamic circle and static circle uh, blueprints from the Radial Impact game. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, let's first go ahead and show you the end result of what we're going to do. Uh, so let's play this real quick. Uh, what we're going to have here is your dynamic and static circles. Uh, we still have our mode buttons from the previous tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, we'll be using the framework of the previous tutorial for those uh, interaction buttons here. Uh, so what we have is the circle growing or shrinking and then if we left click on them it'll stop it and then we get feedback of how well we're doing in terms of how close we're matching the circles up to each other. So that's going to be the end result. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to first need to do is create the content for the two circles, so that means importing the textures, creating the materials, assigning those materials to static meshes, and then creating the blueprints uh, with those static meshes. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, from the previous tutorials of the interaction buttons, we already have the T underscore dynamic underscore circle texture. So all we really need to do now is just import the static circle texture. So let's right click and go to import. And then we just need to find T underscore static circle. Uh, included with this tutorial is going to be a zip folder. It's going to have both the dynamic circle and the static circle textures, just in case you don't have the dynamic one. Uh, but now that we have the two textures imported, now we can go ahead and start creating our materials. So uh, let's go into our materials folder here. Let's right click, create a new material. We're going to name this mat underscore dynamic circle. Let's open that up. And in here, this is where we're going to create our circle uh, for the dynamic circle. So the difference between the dynamic circle and the static circle is just the opacity of the, I guess, the area within the ring. Uh, so what we need to do first is on here with our material hub, we need to go over here to the details panel and just change the blend mode from opaque to translucent. That way we just, we open up the opacity input here. So that that in place, let's go ahead and grab our dynamic circle texture. So let's go back into textures, grab T underscore dynamic circle. And with that selected in our content browser, all we have to do now is hold down the T key and left click and it'll create the texture sample for that. And now we need to create both a scalar parameter and a vector parameter to controls. Uh, the vector parameter is going to control the color of the circle and then the scalar parameter is going to control the intensity of that color and how bright the emissive property is going to be. So let's create the vector parameter. So let's right click, type in vector parameter. We'll name this dynamic circle color. And all the default values are one, just so we have a white color. And now we can right click, type in scalar parameter. We're going to name this dynamic circle intensity. Set that default value to one. And what we can do now is multiply the vector parameter by the scalar parameter. So let's hold down the M key and left click to create a multiply. And we're going to multiply all the values here from the vector parameter and then this one value here from the scalar parameter. And then we're going to multiply this again. So we're going to take this result multiplication. We're going to multiply that by the opacity alpha mask of our texture. And then this end result goes into emissive color. And then the, just the alpha mask of our texture sample that goes into opacity. And then we can take the all, the all value of the vector parameter, the top uh, output pin, and we can just throw that into base color just so we have something there. And then if we hit the plane preview mesh up here, we'll see the final result. And that's exactly what we want. So that's done. So let's save that. And the beauty of this is that the, di the dynamic circle and the static circle, uh, they share an identical material, except uh, the texture is different and the parameters are named differently. So what that means for us is that we can just duplicate this material. If you just hold Control W, it should create a duplicate here. Let's see if we can get that going here. Alright, it's not letting me do it. 
So let's just right click on it, hit duplicate, rename this mat underscore static circle. Double click on that. First thing we're going to do is replace the texture. And let's first put the preview mesh here for the plane up here. So let's go to our textures folder, find the T underscore static circle. With that selected, we can just replace it down here for the texture with this arrow. And then you'll notice the circle changes, obviously. Uh, it has a more opaque or less opaque center. And then we just need to change the names of these uh, variables for the vector and scalar parameters. So instead of it being dynamic circle color, we'll just call it static circle color. And instead of dynamic circle intensity, we'll call it static circle intensity. Everything else is the same, so let's save that. And now that we have the two materials set up, all we have to do is assign those materials to static meshes. And uh, if you're using the same information as the previous tutorial with our uh, game mode buttons, you'll have game mode uh, static meshes here for the planes. Um, but what we'll do instead, we'll go to the starter content, we'll go to shapes, we'll grab the shape underscore plane. Let's left click drag that into our static meshes folder. We'll make a copy. And we're going to rename this sm underscore dynamic underscore circle. Let's open that one up first. With the actual mesh open here in our static mesh editor, let's grab the material for the dynamic circle and just assign it up here. And there's our dynamic circle. So let's save that. Let's create a duplicate of that static mesh for the dynamic circle. So we can do control W like we just did there. We'll name this SM underscore static circle. Double click that. And then in a materials folder, we'll grab the mat underscore static underscore circle material and just reassign it. And there's that second material on that mesh. Now that we have the two static meshes in place, we can now go into our blueprint folder, right click, create a blueprint. We're going to do an actor blueprint. We'll call this one BP underscore static underscore circle. Double click to open that up. Go back into our content browser, go to static meshes. So let's grab our SM underscore static underscore circle mesh. And now focusing on the components tab of this blueprint, that's where we're going to add this mesh. Uh, what we're going to do first is just add a, a root utility here. So uh, what we're going to do is pretty much uh, what I like to do is just create a billboard just so it has some sort of icon associated with it. I'll just call this root. And the absolute scale of this, we can just change this down to like 0.25 if we want to. Uh, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, but now that we have that in place, let's grab a static mesh, and because we have the static circle static mesh highlighted in our content browser, it'll be available for us here. So we just have to select that. And we'll name this uh, static circle mesh. And all we have to do now is just set the rotation here in the X to 90, so that's just flipped upwards. And everything else is default, including the uh, collision. Uh, and that's all we need to do for right now for this blueprint. So let's compile and control S to save. And let's go back to our blueprints folder. Uh, for right now, we can actually create a duplicate of this. We'll call this BP underscore dynamic underscore circle. Double click that. And let's grab the dynamic circle static mesh from our content browser and then in the components tab of our BP underscore dynamic circle we can just replace the mesh here so right here where it says static mesh just hit the arrow it'll update we also want to change the variable name from static circle mesh to dynamic circle mesh and that's it so control save um, and then what we can do here last but not least we can just throw these blueprints into our scene just so they're there so let's right click, add the BP circle. Doesn't really matter where it's placed exactly. Uh, 
Uh, but we do want to change the actually the ex absolute scale instead of being 0.25. Let's change that back to 1 just so it's large. So that's the dynamic circle. Let's throw in the static circle. So let's just copy that. Right click, replace with the BP static, change to absolute scale 1. Um, and just to save us you know, any kind of issues here, let's go back. Uh, for the root, let's just change the absolute scale back to 1, just so we don't have to keep changing the size of it. So we got to do that in both of them here. So it's the root, absolute scale, just change it all to 1. And what I like to do here is have the static circle uh, just be a little bit behind the dynamic circle. So 10 units is fine just a little bit, uh, but then make sure they're lined up from there. And then for the dynamic circle, what we can go ahead and do, um, actually not the dynamic circle, let's make the static circle just a little bit bigger. Uh, so let's make this 1.5. And that should be it for now. So we have both the static circle and the dynamic circle created with our blueprints. Uh, we haven't created any logic yet within our graphs, but we have the mesh set up and we have the uh, actual variable set up for the mesh. So in the next video, we're going to actually start scripting the static circle. And then the video after that, we'll script the dynamic circle. And if necessary, we'll create an, a fourth video just to tie it all together if necessary. Uh, but for now, this is going to be the end of this video. And again, my name is Devin Sherry. I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.